Hi, I'm Eric Ferguson. Uh, I'm one of the writers on Minnesota Progressive Project, and I'm going to be live blogging the DFL convention uh, on Saturday, um, maybe Sunday, depending on whether I'm able to get to the live stream. But I will be there uh, in person on Saturday, and um, I'll be doing this in Minnesota Progressive Project. The odds are that you're actually watching this video embedded on that post, so uh, just look down below, and I'll be posting updates as things happen. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put the link to the live blog uh, in the description. And uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel, uh, I don't always post political stuff. You know, it's my personal channel. But um, you can click on the YouTube logo in, in the video, and that takes you to YouTube. And then there's a, a subscribe button. You click that, and you're subscribed. You can follow whatever it is that I happen to do that I post. <laughs> okay. Um, First, uh, just just to be, be clear, um, uh, I, okay, I, I'm a blogger. I'm not a reporter, all right? so that means that I'm I'm free to give my opinions. Um, and I'm about to give an, a little introduction and tell you what what's going to be going on at the DFL convention. Uh, first, I do want to uh, just talk about a, a con one conflict of interest. I want to have full disclosure. I'm the chair of a local DFL unit, specifically Senate District 63. And what I write here is just me. I'm writing as myself. I'm not speaking for my Senate district. I'm not speaking for the DFL at any level. So if I say something stupid, and you know, if you're a conservative, you probably will think I am. Uh, just so you know, don't ask anybody in my district. They're not going to be responsible for it. It's not their problem. All right. Okay. Um, also, I know that longtime readers of Minnesota Progressive Project probably know this, but for anybody else. Um, Every writer is on our own. It's a community blog. Anybody can sign up and post. So if you want to start writing yourself, just create an account and go ahead. And that means we don't have assignments. We don't have editors. Like I said, you know, we're not a reporter. I'm purely amateur. I'm not getting paid. It means I can do what I want to do. And that also means that uh, nobody else is responsible for anything that I post. We, we don't edit each other except maybe for fixing typos because you know, we're nice people that way. Um, so if you have any problems with anything I say, bring it to me. It's just my problem. It's not anybody else's problem. All right. All right. Um, so to tell you what's going on at the convention here, uh, well, first, the, the way the live blog will work is, as I have an update, I'll be posting it below, and I'll add new parts down underneath that. I'll put a little time marker on there. You know, I'll, I'll type it in, you know, just type it in manually um, to say when the update was. All right. So you go ahead and check back in once in a while. And I guess what shows amateurism is I'm going to um, direct you over to somebody else's video. But the uptake is going to try to stream both conventions. So you can go over to theuptake.org and watch this live. if you, And you can come back over and watch my commentary once in a while if you want to. Um, okay. Uh, so what's going on? Let me just get my notes here. Okay. Um, what is so? What's going on is um, something that I think is pretty unusual. Both parties are having their conventions uh, at the same time. Both Republicans and Democrats are meeting on Saturday and Sunday. Um, I don't know the whole Republican schedule, but I'm more interested in the Democratic one, honestly. And on Saturday, uh, they're going to be having endorsements for our statewide offices, and Sunday is going to be um, party directors, uh, elect ones we're elected at large, as well as discussions of. Um, Platform items constitu and constitutional matters. So I'll see if I can get the live stream and comment on that. Uh, we'll see. But I will be there on Saturday. Um, okay, so right now the DFL holds every statewide office. I suppose in a way that means we have nowhere to go but down. But anyway, the endorsing conventions are going to be endorsing for the U.S. Senate seat that's held by Al Franken um, for governor and lieutenant governor. And the state constitutional offices, which are state auditor, attorney general, and secretary of state, and maybe endorsements for judicial offices. Um, I'll put an asterisk on that, and I'll uh, get back to that in a bit. Uh, let's just focus on those offices. Um, all right, so the Republicans are probably going to get a lot more press attention for the simple fact they've got uh, everything open. And they have endorsement contests for sure for senator and governor and secretary of state. And they have at least one candidate for auditor and attorney general. I don't know if they're going to end up with endorsement contest or not. And the DFL side, 
from my point of view, the more interesting side. Um, we have incumbents running for re-election for U.S. Senate and for Governor and Attorney General and for State Auditor. Um, the Lieutenant Governor is, so to speak, open, but the way it works in Minnesota is that the Governor and the Lieutenant Governor run on the, the same ballot line, like, a, like President and Vice President. So whoever gets the endorsement as Governor gets to pick their preferred candidate for Lieutenant Governor, and that person will just be endorsed. I, I suppose in theory, the party could endorse somebody else. I don't know how that would how that would play out, but that's not going to happen this time. So Senator Al Franken and Governor Mark Dayton, Attorney General Lori Swanson, and State Auditor Rebecca Otto are expected to just fly on through. And the governor has picked uh, Tina Smith as his lieutenant governor, so she ought to have an easy endorsement also. And maybe they do them as a pair. I'm not entirely sure, actually. Um, our one contest is for Secretary of State. And we have uh, two state representatives who are running for that post who are putting on very serious campaigns, by which I mean they're, you know, they went, they went to the precinct caucuses and they go to all the conventions and they're contacting delegates, so they're pretty serious candidates. Uh, Deborah Hillstrom and Steve Simon. And I don't have any really hard information on who's going to win or how many delegates each one is getting. I've just got bits and pieces here and there. I know what happened at my Senate district. Uh, since we did have uh, sub-caucuses, so a few people got elected for a specific candidate, and I've heard bits and pieces here. So yeah, this isn't uh, really hard information. Um, my sense is that Steve Simon has a lead. If you were going to um, bet on, on that, um, I guess that you don't really understand what hard information means. <laughs> um, if I'm going to hazard a prediction, and boy, would I not bet on this, I think Steve Simon's going to get the endorsement on the first or second ballot. Okay. Um, I hope I'm not just trusting my gut and extrapolating from too little information, but I suspect I am. Um, something else interesting on the Republican side is that generally they don't have serious primary challenges to their candidates, but this year it looks like they will, whereas on the DFL side, where that happens once in a while, it looks like we're not. Uh, I guess we don't know for sure, but... It appears that we're not. So the Republicans are going to, again, have more intrigue. And that's part of why I'm doing this, because I think the press is all going to be over on the Republican side. But you know, the DFL is interesting, too. Um, if you're looking for a prediction of what the, the Republicans are going to do in terms of their endorsements, I just have no idea. I just don't have anything approaching enough information. Um, so we'll just see how that turns out. Okay. Um, uh, you know, regarding what I mentioned about judicial elections, uh, Minnesota used to have a law that prohibited parties from endorsing judicial candidates, and judicial candidates weren't allowed to uh, run uh, explicitly as partisans. Um, that law got tossed out by the courts eight or ten years ago, I don't remember exactly. And so now it's legal to endorse uh, candidates for judicial offices, but the DFL as a policy doesn't do it, so DFL won't be having judicial endorsements. The Republicans have some years, not other years. I don't know if they are. And I, like I mentioned in that post I wrote at the beginning of the year, making predictions, I have a bad feeling this is the year where we're going to have big independent money come into our judicial elections. We'll see. I, I really just don't know. Um, okay, so um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link in the description so you can follow the live blog. And if you're on Progressive Project, um, the comments work. So you got some comments, go ahead and put those in. And I will do updates as things happen at the convention.